Hey there, and welcome to my Thundergosa 10 man video. So basically, it's a tank and spank fight. Uh, there's two phases to it. In the first phase, as a DPS, you never want to be in front of the boss because you could get hit by an ability called Frost Breath, and you never want to be behind the boss because you could get hit by an ability called Tail Swipe. As a melee DPS, you want to attack from the side of the boss, and as a ranged DPS or a healer, same thing, but you want to be uh, behind the melee group just a little bit. As for the tank, you simply pick up the boss and turn it and face it away from the group so that the positioning is set. Uh, you just do your damage and stuff. There are two debuffs that you do need to be paying attention to. If you are a melee DPS, you need to be paying attention to, uh, there's like a, every time you attack, you have a chance to add this debuff to yourself with a physical attack and it does stack and basically the higher the stacks are the more damage it will do to you until it fully wears off and goes away. So in order to get rid of that you're going to have to stop doing uh, physical damage just for a short period of time or use something that gets rid of the debuff from you. And as a caster or a ranged DPS uh, or even a healer the boss will put an ability on you called Unchained Magic, and basically the way that works is it picks two people, and whenever you cast a spell with that uh, debuff on you, you will gain a stack. Uh, X amount of stacks will equal X amount of damage, so one stack has its own amount, just like three stacks would have three times that amount. So it's important that you're watching your debuffs, whether you're a melee DPS or a caster, debuff, uh, caster DPS, and you're allowing those debuffs to wear off so that they don't kill you. As a uh, caster on normal mode, it will only attack yourself, but if the debuffs are too high, you can kill yourself with it. The other ability that the boss has is uh, an ability called Blistering Cold. What she will do is she will pull everybody into the middle of her and then start casting Blistering Cold. You have to run about 25 yards away from her in order to avoid the Blistering Cold. The best thing you can possibly do is just run away until you see the ability go off unless you are more comfortable with positioning and you know where to stand. Another thing to pay attention to as a ranged DPS or a caster, you don't want to be standing too far away from the boss when she does the pull, because if you're really far away and she does the pull, you're not going to have enough time to run away from the blistering cold because you will have spent too much time in the air flying to the middle of the boss. That might sound a little bit complicated, but basically don't stand too far away. Uh, so the other thing that she will do in phase one is she will fly into the air and she will uh, pick two targets and hit them with a frost tomb. Basically they need to spread apart in designated areas and get hit with the frost tomb individually and then you will have to, for the people who are outside of the frost tombs, you will have to look around the room and look for a small white circle and there will be four of those. Uh, at a time, like, or sorry, not four at a time, but there will be four individuals, one after the other. Basically, you have to put yourself on the other side of the tomb so that the bomb is on one side and the tomb is between you and the bomb. It's called line of sight. If you do this successfully, the bomb won't technically be able to see you and therefore it won't be able to damage you. You have to dodge four bombs while doing this and after the fourth bomb you need to break the tombs out. So the best thing you should possibly do is damage the tombs to low health so that when the fourth bomb goes off you can just destroy the tombs quickly. The reason this is beneficial is because the people who are in the tombs will start taking damage after the fourth bomb lands. And when the fourth bomb does land the dragon, Cindergosa, will start to fly back to the encounter and the tank will need to pick her up. From there you simply pick her up, turn her, and then continue on just like you did up until the air phase. You will continue this until you get to phase 3. Um, basically, with phase 3, she will no longer fly into the air, she will freeze an individual instead of two people with her frost tomb, and that person needs to run into the melee group, get hit by the frost tomb individually, which would be beside her since that's where the melee is, all the melee would run out, and then person gets hit alone, you go back in and you kill the frost tomb. Uh, she will still do blistering cold so you will need to uh, time it. Usually it's the second frost tomb and then I think the fifth or sixth frost tomb but if you pay attention to your DBM timers you can see when the frost uh, the 
the blistering cold is coming and you would need to leave a frost tomb up. The reason you do this is because just like when she's in the air and the ice bomb she's dropping can't see you and therefore can't damage you if you're behind the tomb, if you're behind the tomb from her, she can't see you and therefore she can't hurt you with the blistering cold, which is why you leave it up. The only other things to mention is that for the tanks, um, you can sit solo tank the first phase and simply just tank the damage, don't bother running away for blistering cold. She does an ability called, uh, like I said, frost breath. When you get hit by it, it has a debuff attached to it. This can also stack, so usually a paladin will panda freedom you and that's that. And then as for tank switching in the last phase, uh, when the last phase starts at 35%, a new debuff gets introduced into the fight. It's called Mystic Buffet. It will add, I think, 20% increased magical damage taken, and it's a stacking effect. You need to get behind the uh, frozen tomb to get rid of the effect because she can't see you and she can't apply it to you. So what the tanks usually do is after the first or second frost tomb, the off tank will go in and taunt off of the boss and the off the main tank will run out and reset their debuffs by hiding behind a tomb. Once their debuffs have been reset and they no longer have Mystic Buffet, they will go back and tank again and the other tank will just simply leave, reset their debuffs, back and forth, back and forth. The best way to keep track of when to switch is simply go get rid of your debuffs then tank, let the other tank get rid of their debuffs, they'll come back and you just keep taking turns doing this until she is dead. The best time to bloodlust in this fight would obviously be at 35%, but the main thing to pay attention to or to know for this fight on how to beat it on easy mode, in my opinion, is to understand that this fight is just about paying attention to the debuffs that are on yourself so you don't kill yourself and getting the uh, tombs in the appropriate position so you don't kill the raid. Other than that, it's a pretty simple fight. I hope I helped you guys a little bit if you're having any issues. I thought this explanation would be a little bit quicker, but here we are. But thank you guys so much for watching it with me, and again, I hope it helped you guys. Have a great day!